So in this Blender time lapse, I'm going to be creating an X-wing type spacecraft. I didn't actually set out to create an X-wing or even any type of wing spacecraft. I just kind of decided I was going to build a spacecraft and just see what came out. I wanted it to be sci-fi styled, so uh, this basically is how it turned out. So I started off with the basic uh, scene in Blender, which was the cube, and began extruding out at the front there and shaping it to give me the front nose of the aircraft. Um, originally I thought this was going to be kind of a small two-seater spacecraft type thing, but, but, but it turned into something a little bit bigger, but it's not quite mothership size. Um, it's still some kind of Star Wars-esque fighter jet, I guess. Um, so there I'm just modeling the front, basically just very simple um, extrusion of edges and manipulating of faces, pushing and pulling the faces in. Um, so we want to keep our spacecraft with kind of hard edges and hard panels, so I didn't apply any smoothing to the final um, product other than a couple of small accessories, um, some, some guns which, which were round which I applied smoothing to. Um, but the majority of this is, is uh, no smoothing, it's all just hard edges and hard panels. So what I'm modeling here is the kind of cockpit area maybe I was envisioning sitting on top of the, the, the rear there. So it's just making loop cuts and extrusions and uh, blocking out really the main shapes. So at the rear here I decided I was going to put the engines on. Um, so that's what I'm working on there. It's kind of the exhaust or engines or something at the rear there. So uh, really I kind of just built this fuselage and then everything else came on top of it. That was kind of my, my workflow. I didn't really, like I say, set out to create this winged craft. Um, I was going more for a kind of UFO type effect. Uh, I could have left it at, at, at that really. Um, but then I, I got really stuck into it and started adding in all these other features and um, whatnot. So uh, this, the engines there at the back just proved a little bit tricky just to get the uh, the shape. I had to do it a couple of times and deleted a couple of the uh, some of the faces below. I was getting some cross vertices. So I mean at this stage now it kind of looks like a boat. You could almost uh, you know turn that into a boat. So I'm just modeling now on the bottom here some um, air intake vents or um, they could be a part of the propulsion system or air conditioning system, I'm not, not so sure. Um, I just thought it looked cool, so I added them there. And you can also see at the front, we've also got a hole, so my plan was to put some kind of blue glowing light or something inside the, the nose piece. Um, so, yeah, what I'm working on now is some creases. Um, I wanted some, some creases in the body panels. Now, you could do that with texturing later, but I decided uh, I may not text this model, so I just put in um, hard edges, and now I'm beginning on the wings. So uh, once I'd actually got those wings out and in place, I decided that it would kind of look cool if I had another set of wings underneath. So I extruded out a second set below it, and uh, I thought it made it look more sci-fi-like. At the moment, it could still be some kind of military fighter jet of the modern age, but once you add in these kind of X-Wing, it begins to look more sci-fi-esque. Um, so it's really a balancing act when you're doing this sci-fi modeling between getting something which looks believable, like it could actually fly, but also looking unrealistic, as in it doesn't actually fly. Um, so it's always kind of a bit of a challenge, and I'm not the most um, imaginative and creative of people. I don't have a, a graphic artist that kind of illustrating background. Um, so what comes out really is just uh, kind of a combination of what's in my own imagination and, and of course I go on Google before I start something and I search Google images for images of spacecraft and I get some ideas um, as to how maybe it should look. So this is the exhaust system at the back there again. That was just um, extruding edges and, and faces. Um, so then I brought in another object as a cylinder and I decided I was going to put something on the wingtips but then it didn't really work out so I, I abandoned it but then later on I actually came back to back to it and I, uh, I did add something to the wingtips in the end like a, a big spike coming off of the wings.
So this uh, is the windows of the cockpit. And uh, when I text that later on, they'll be kind of a dark black color in the final render. So there's kind of a double cockpit. You've got two sets of windows there, uh, above and below. Um, so it's really, you know, it's kind of a largest spaceship if you think about it, if that's the cockpit area only. Um, so then I just started doing some work on these kind of air intakes or put another part of the propulsion system. I just extruded that edge out and I thought, well, that looks kind of neat. Um, we'll make that into some kind of air intake or uh, something else which you can apply a glow effect to later. So uh, you might notice that, I mean, uh, a lot of the time I'm kind of spinning the model around and I'm looking at mm, what should I do here rather than, you know, actually modeling because I'm not working from an actual reference image. So it's uh, one of the longest parts of the modeling process for me is actually coming up with the ideas. So what I'm adding in here is some vents, um, some panels, some slats to make a kind of vented air intake on the bottom there. So then I continued going around and adding in these uh, creases. Basically, you just make three edges that are close together and you take the center one, you extrude it or scale it inwards and um, or move it inwards and then you get your uh, your kind of crease. Uh, and I think it really works. It, it kind of, you know, generally looks like you've got these metal body panels on your spacecraft. So uh, I don't quite know where I went with this then at the end here. I, I um, decided to go and do some work on the rear exhaust again and it didn't really work out so I put it back as it was. Um, so these are some more panels, indentations. So... Uh, Really, um, what I'm spending the time doing now is just uh, putting in all of the little features, um, which really makes a difference between having um, a believable looking model or not. So again, I've got these kind of ridges at the back there. Um, and these ridges are, again, some kind of exhaust system or um, a radiator maybe. Uh, you'll notice I'm only modeling on half of the model because the other half is... Um, is just a mirror. So this here that I'm doing now, that's just the background, so that when we do the final render, um, we've got something in the background and something we can bounce the lights off, so it's just kind of a bit of a test render that I did there. Um, and I'm starting to apply just a, a single base material, uh, just so I can start checking out how the highlights are looking and, and whether there's any um, deformities in the mesh that need fixing uh, they show up better when it's rendered and when you've got a kind of bright reflective surface on there this helps to identify areas of the mesh that maybe um, you've got stray vertices or um, faces which cross each other and once I checked that then uh, again I went back to adding in some more um, creases into the bodywork so again to create those it's just three lines close together you select the center line, they're usually an edge loop. Um, the body panels usually follow the kind of flow of the polygons of the edges. If you imagine if you're drawing this by pencil, those um, those edge creases would probably be the, the main pencil lines that you're drawing. And now I've got on to creating some of the uh, smaller features which we um, have on the bodywork there, so I created that. I didn't really like. It. I couldn't find somewhere to place it, so uh, I came back later on and created something else. Um, there's like this uh, round um, raised section that goes on the um, the front of the fuselage, which you'll see later on. So this here that I'm making is the mount for the gun. So that came out of the side of the bodywork there. It's uh, that's just going to be where the uh, the cylinder, which will be shaped into our gun, will be mounted on. So there's the cylinder, and I'm just shaping that. In. It's just a matter again of extruding edges and um, scaling it and making some kind of missile shape or gun shape, which then goes on the mount there. So. Uh, this 
This would then be joined up to the main object, so it will automatically be mirrored across to the other side when it's joined. So the shortcut for that was Control-J. And then I copied those guns, uh, scaled them, and, and then placed them in other places. So uh, you don't have to model them every time. You know, uh, and once you've scaled it down and put it in different locations, it's, people don't really notice that it's a duplicate anyway. You can get away with actually reusing quite a lot of pieces of your model. I always try and do that. Try and cut down on the amount of modeling you actually have to do and, and reuse as many pieces as you can, um, when, especially when it comes to the fine detail like this. Just played around a little bit, uh, positioning those on the fuselage either side. Again, Control-J, I uh, joined them, and then they were automatically mirrored across. And uh, I experimented with some kind of circular rocket boosters on the rear exhaust, but I didn't really like it, so I removed them. In any case, in the final render, you don't see the rear, so it was unnecessary. It would have just increased the rendering time, having unnecessary objects there. Um, there's actually a fair few unnecessary objects if you look at the final render and there's, there's a lot of detail here which is not seen but uh, I like to put the detail into the model you know so later on I can reuse it and if I do want to view it from another angle it, it, it's already uh, the features already there I don't have to go in and do any remodeling I may want to use this in an animation or a flyby or something and you see um, other sides and I don't want there to be glaring uh, sections which aren't actually modeled so these are just again some some ridges, some air intakes or radiator vents. Yeah, and then uh, I created this pipe that's kind of bent, it comes out the side that had a slightly different kind of laser laser beam gun to it or something. And then uh, yeah, I came back to the wings and added these spikes, very very thin uh, cylinder that was extruded out and goes to a point. And this now is the part which is going to go on the hood. So I created a cylinder and uh, mirrored it. Um, once it was uh, mirrored, then whatever you do on one side, obviously, then is replicated on the other. If you're going to do that, you've got to make sure that you choose to apply that effect before you join it um, to the rest of the model. But I, I opted not to join it. I kept it as a separate piece just in case later on I do want to uh, UV unwrap this. It will be a little bit easier if that's a separate piece. So... Um, even if my immediate plan is not to actually UV unwrap and properly texture the model, I try and build it in such a way that it can be. So later on in the future, if I do want to reuse it or I want to come back and texture it properly, then it's all already modeled in, in the correct way, ready for texturing. So I felt like there was something lacking in between the wings there, so I decided to add in another vent. And pretty much now we're on the home straight, it's just a matter of going through and tidying up some, some parts. I had some straight vertices and um, some faces which were subdivided, which were unnecessarily subdivided, so I, I joined them up again. And doing that just helps to keep the mesh tidy. So I felt like there was something missing kind of from the top of that. So I actually built another piece that I added onto this. Um, made out of a cylinder also, which was then extruded out. Uh, I did experiment also with some smoothing on that part, but I didn't like the final effect with the smoothing. So I turned it off, went back to the flat edges. Uh, you can see there some of the edges are marked blue. That's because I, I marked them sharp when I was trying out the smoothing, but I wasn't really too happy with it. So I just turned the smoothing off.
Now on the rear, I decided to add in um, a small vent there. And then I also modeled uh, a, a kind of rocket booster to go on the bottom. Uh, my idea being that this would be a vertical landing spacecraft and it would kind of hover um, you know, above the surface as it's landing. And the X-wing shape actually makes the lander, so it wouldn't have no, it would have no um, landing gears. It would just kind of land on those wings that stick down it at the side. So that makes the X-wing functional. Also, if you were to ever use this in an animation, you wanted to show it landing. Um, now I'm beginning to start creating some of the base textures and materials, and I start to apply those to the surfaces. And there's our background again. I just had to scale it up and position it. Added a color to it. I just went with a, an almost black. It's a very dark gray. Pretty much in the final render, it looks black. I didn't go for flat black because uh, I wanted it to have some light reflecting properties just to help with the shadows on my final model. I created an emission texture, which will just be our glowing texture, so that will make it appear like it's emitting light. So I made a, a bright white one, also a darker white, uh, a bright blue and a bright red, which we use in different places. You can see now in those renders, it's starting to um, kind of take shape. I'm just playing around a little bit with the textures to get the right amount of reflectiveness. I didn't want it too glossy, but also you don't want it too flat, but you don't want it to appear too glossy either. That's creating the red light emitter. Now I'm just going around and applying these textures to different parts of the model. There's our rocket boosters on the bottom there. So here we go, we're starting to get into the final stages now, um, pretty much done. So what we do then is just do some compositing at the end. I'm going to add in some um, effects, some compositing effects. So this is the compositing window here and you, uh, you add in um, some glare to the lights so that they have a little bit of a, a glare to them so they look a bit more realistic, not, not just glowing, they, they actually you know, have a bit of a glare, some blur, and uh, then I also put in some color correction. Um, so instead of making render layers, um, I created multiple passes and uh, on each pass. So uh, I had three layers basically, or three passes. One pass was for the structure the other pass was for the white light, the other pass for the blue light. And then that allowed me to um, add different effects to the white and different effects to the blue lights because they both needed slightly different uh, strengths and settings in the, in the blur and in the, uh, in the glare. Um, otherwise, the glare on the white was too much if I used the same one for the blue and the white. So I'm still getting the hang a little bit of compositing, so it took me a little while just to get everything done. That's the final color correction there, and then I noticed a few things on the render that I wanted to change, so I went back in and did those before doing the final output. And there it is, the final output. 